They tricked him out with a chrome, naughty knife sensor. So he'd know who deserved gifts and who deserved brutal punishment. Yo, that might have been the first mistake right there. Hey, hello, how do you do? Shady Directs here. Futurama, woo, it's been a hot minute since I've touched this show. Since then, we've had an entire new season, including a brand new Christmas episode. Today, we're looking at the new Futurama episode, I Know What You Did Next Christmas. Oh, by the way, Futurama calls the holiday Xmas. I shan't be doing that. The episode starts with, hold up, stop, that's a pine tree. Previously on Avatar. There's supposed to be some kind of, you know, pine tree. Pine trees have been extinct for 800 years, Fry. Did y'all just get the continuity wrong in the first five seconds of the episode? Meh, I guess I can't really be too hard on the writers. Continuity was always up in the air when it came to this show. Shoot, in the episode where they said pine trees were extinct, they showed an abundance of pine trees. As per usual, the Planet Express crew prepare for Santa's arrival by setting up defenses. If that sentence made no sense to you, then you haven't watched nearly enough Futurama. While the team is setting up the defenses, Zoidberg notices a card in Bender's stocking. I know what you did next, Xmas. Hey, look, he said the name of the episode. Now, should I use a Cinema Sins roll credits joke or a Family Guy he said it joke? You know what? I'm going to subvert expectations and use neither. Because Bender has a lot of enemies and is constantly getting into trouble, he pays the note no mind and just tosses it aside. Who's ready for their very first animated holiday special? Ooh, wait for me. I love having other kids around. Hmm. I'm going to pretend like that wasn't a personal attack on me. The kids in Fry watch the holiday special, which recaps the story of this world's Santa for the audience. About 200 years ago, the friendly robot company made a Santa bot that was supposed to do the job of an actual Santa. Something went tragically mashugana. His naughty nice sense of malfunction. Interesting way to describe it. I guess a programming error is technically a malfunction, but that makes it seem like something went wrong in the middle of his delivery. Yay, Santa's here! I'm sorry, kids. I never wanted you to know Santa was real. Later, we see the crew continuing to prepare for Santa when Farnsworth comes in. I know how to fix Santa. I just need to sneak up on him and reverse the polarity of his naughty dice sensor. Wait, what? Santa's issue was a programming error. Hold on, let me grab the clip. Due to a programming error, Santa's standards were set too high, and he invariably judges everyone to be naughty. That doesn't seem like a problem one can fix by reversing polarities. I assume the episode doesn't care of what that term actually means, and is just saying the professor is gonna switch the settings in Santa to be opposite of what they currently are. And if that's the case, I guess Santa is just gonna give everyone gifts now, since making him the opposite of what he is means he would assume everyone, except Zoidberg, is nice. This whole thing makes me think the episode forgot what Santa's programming error actually is. But Santa's always on guard against attacks. Santa's only prepared for an attack from the present. That's stupid. But it's Futurama stupid, so no complaints. So I've been souping up my old time machine. Wait, the one from the late Philip J. Fry? Oh, that's a nice callback. Where is it? The question is, when is it? And the answer is, right about now. If I had a nickel for every time I reviewed a time-traveling Christmas episode where someone felt the need to make time puns, I'd have two nickels. Which isn't a lot, but it's weird that it happened twice. My plan is to back up to the year 2801. Did this building even exist in 2801? Yeah, but back then it was some kind of meat market. Yeah, the meat market is a joke that this episode references quite a few times, and I feel very out of the loop because I don't get it at all. Maybe it's an innuendo, but it's legitimately going over my head. Isn't it risky to go back in time and change history? Yeah, you could create a paradox. If you go back and fix Santa, then you'll create a timeline in which Santa doesn't need fixing, which means you'll never have to fix him and thus won't go back in time to do so. They address this in another Futurama episode. But I'll go alone to minimize the chance of anyone becoming their own grandfather. Fun reference, but that doesn't solve the paradox problem. So the professor ignores me and goes back in time to do his plan. He arrives on the scene and is able to reverse the polarity without a hitch. After he's done, he tries to head back to his time, but he trips over a running joke. Oh, bother. I shifted into reverse by accident. First of all, the slot for that lever keeps changing. Second, okay, just flip the switch to the correct position and go forward. I guess I'll have to take her around by the scenic route. What? No, you've only gone back a few centuries. It's gonna take way longer to go all the way around. Also, there's a much bigger problem with doing this. 
Writers, I know you think you're being clever by unnecessarily referencing the late Philip J. Fry again, as well as Disenchantment, but you're forgetting a major detail. The repeating timelines are not identical. I don't have time to go into all the details, but basically Farnsworth has a 50% chance of ending up in a timeline where he, Fry, and Bender are presumed dead instead of the timeline he knew. How'd it go? Not a hitch. Okay, well, I guess he won that coin toss, but that means the professor of this timeline lost it. That one's gonna have some explaining to do to Leela. It also means that the timeline we just left no longer has a Farnsworth because he didn't exist in the timeline after to travel back from. And little side note, to everyone who was upset at the late Philip J. Fry because technically only Fry, Bender, and Farnsworth were the only original characters we know and love, well, now it's only Farnsworth. We've never seen any of these other people before because they all grew up in a world where Hitler randomly exploded instead of Eleanor Roosevelt. And finally, and this is the most important thing, I was right, disenchantment does take place in the future, not the past. I fixed Santa! <laughs> so wait, you all remember Santa being evil. That's suspicious. Everyone, take the week off and be with your so-called loved ones. So everyone takes off to be with their families, leaving Zoiberg and Bender behind. So Bender. No. You and I are the only ones with no family. What are you talking about? You both have families. In fact, you both individually have more family than everyone else combined. Not to mention, Bender is technically Farmsworth's family in multiple ways. Unfortunately for Zoidberg, he fails in his attempt to convince Bender to hang out with him. After this, we get a montage of the Planet Express crew enjoying the holidays with their families. These are the B stories which appear throughout the episode, where we get to see how everyone celebrates the holidays, each preparing a different version of Turducken. I really enjoy these parts of the episode, but there's not much going on from me to talk about, so we're gonna skip over them. Back at Planet Express, Zoidberg tries again to bond with Bender. I brought Dumpster Nog, and not the kind for kids. Four, Four something, 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 three, three something, something else, two, two no one cares, cares. And, and a partridge drowned in our nog. Another day in December, another version of 12 Days of Christmas. Have y'all ever heard the Chick-fil-A version? Three large fries, two yogurt cups, and a number one with a sweet tea. My pleasure. This stuff is strong. Hey, how many glasses have we had it? None. This is just from the fumes. Uh, I'm assuming that's supposed to be alcohol, but that makes no sense considering Bender is a robot and thus only acts intoxicated when he doesn't drink. Bender and Zoidberg begin lamenting about how they hate that everyone abandoned them. My species dies when we reproduce, so if I had a family, I'd be dead. Again, fun callback, but Zoidberg does have family. What's this? A card from my cousin Zoidfarb. Bender and Zoidberg, in a drunken rage, decide to go back in time to last Christmas to kidnap the now nice Santa, thus ruining this Christmas for their friends. The two arrive at the office's plan, tie up Santa, and bring him back with them. Once they're back in their own time, they store Santa in the old meat locker. We're geniuses. I'm geniuses. Do the bender, do, do the, the bender, bender, do, do the, the bender. bender. Before they can celebrate for too long, however, Santa breaks free. The time machine. Good idea. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I probably should have seen that coming. That's a classic. Santa's about to catch his prey when he slips on the nog and proceeds to get electrocuted. Finally, a callback I don't have a complaint about. He's dead. We killed Santa Claus. Zoidberg, an incompetent doctor, uses a stethoscope on a creature with no biological functions. Yeah, I'm sure we can trust this. Robert. Okay, well, at the very least, they absolutely have me hooked on this mystery. Bender and Zoidberg realize that with a death on their hands, they need to get rid of the body. Now we just add some extra weight. Using the Legend of Zelda logic there, you're holding the weight. They don't get heavier just because you... I can't tell if I was smart enough to see the punchline coming or if I didn't see it at all. It's not working. Still nothing. Why did I think that would work? Zoidberg and Bender spend the next few days trying to get rid of the body, but to no avail. They get to their final desperate attempt, eating Santa, when something unexpected happens. Surprise! We didn't know you hadn't been invited anywhere. We came as soon as we realized what losers you are. Other than Fry, this seems a bit out of character for anyone to care about Zoidberg and Bender. But it's in the spirit of Christmas as well as being funny, so I don't really care. Bender and Zoidberg are able to disguise Santa as decorations with no one noticing. Well, Qbert notices, but they take care of him. The Planet Express crew and family all enjoy the evening by having dinner and waiting for Santa to arrive. Santa should be here any minute now. 
Santa seems less dead than we thought. Okay, I'm very confused. The professor realizes the mistake he made. When he went back in time and reversed Santa's naughty nice sensor, it was that act which threw Santa out of whack in the first place, which again makes no sense. If Farnsworth just reversed Santa's thought process, then Santa should be rewarding the naughty and punishing the nice. He's not doing that, he's just punishing everyone, even Zoidberg for some reason. Also, this is a reminder that Futurama is very inconsistent with its time traveling mechanics. Sometimes you can't change the past, sometimes you can, and sometimes you do, but you don't notice any difference in the present. They just use whatever rule is convenient for the plot at the time. You've all been very naughty, especially you, Mandy. I'm sorry I forgot to feed the hamster. I absolutely love that joke so much. I do wish though that Mandy had been more vague about what she did. If she had just said something like, it was an accident, that would have left whatever she did to our imaginations and would have been funnier. Arm yourselves. Literally no one arms themselves and instead they all hide. Cookie? And here we are. Last Xmas. You didn't take us to last Xmas, you took us to next Xmas. Ah, okay. That's actually a pretty clever twist. It's like the one thing about time travel that the episode actually thought through. We kidnapped and murdered Santa. Your heroes. <laughs> what, Rose? Do, Do the bender. bender. Do, Do the bender. bender. You and Zoidberg are friends now? That's so cute. There's one thing I still don't understand. Which one of you meatbags wrote the creepy notes? Was I? Uh, how? I sent the notes from the future. How? Because I knew what you did next Xmas. You became friends with Zoidberg. So I'm blackmailing you. How? How could Santa have possibly sent the messages? Bender got his first message in his stocking well before anything had happened. Past Santa couldn't have known about it, he's not precognizant. The time machine was destroyed, so there's no way present Santa went back in time to leave any messages before the fact. Not to mention, present Santa was with Bender and out of commission this entire time. He had no opportunity to leave any messages. This reveal makes no sense. Also, Santa may be alive, but his nice naughty chip was eaten. Is he still functioning properly? The episode ends with Quanzabot wrapping yet another version of 12 Days of Christmas, followed by a dedication to the late Coolio who voiced him. And that was I Know What You Did Next Christmas. I think I'm gonna have to call this one a guilty pleasure. There's a lot wrong with the continuity here, even more so than your average Futurama episode. The time traveling is also done really sloppily. It creates a ton of plot holes as time traveling tends to do. But regardless of that, I had a really fun time. The jokes kept me on my toes, the mystery was intriguing, even if the resolution was disappointing. Zoidberg and Bender make a fun duo, and I really enjoyed watching the Futurama cast actually do some classic holiday shenanigans. Seeing different families and traditions, even in the silly Futurama environment, brings out the Christmas spirit in me. I especially love when they're all sitting around the fire, eating their meal, and enjoying each other's company. That section was extremely short, and yet it left an impact. Is this the best written episode? Absolutely not. But if you're willing to turn your brain off, have a laugh, and are eager to get into the Christmas spirit, then you shouldn't have too much trouble enjoying it. This has been Shady Durags. So long. Farewell. I feel the same. Goodbye.